Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. We pause for a moment of reflection and self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join in our gathering hymn, Lift High the Cross. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. 
For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we certainly will be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives for God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 69 responsively. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach. I have become a stranger to my own kindred. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. I humble myself with fasting. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. Hide not your face from your servant. Draw near to me and redeem me.
According to Matthew, the 10th chapter, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the 12, a disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master the house, how much more will they malign of this house? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, for nothing is secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell them in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father, and even the hairs on your head are all counted. So do not be afraid, you are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set man against his father, and daughter against her mother, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of our Lord. What are you afraid of? What keeps you up at night worrying? What absolutely fills you with dread? In these days of economic recession and financial woes, physical distancing, a nation divided, and a global pandemic, I'm sure our answers to these questions are nearly endless. We fear losing our jobs and our livelihoods, we fear loneliness and isolation. We fear COVID-19. We fear violence. We fear losing our status, our power, and even our privilege. We fear death. If you were to take a guess, what commandment would you say is most frequently repeated throughout all of the Bible? Maybe you're thinking to love one another. Maybe even the call to love God. Maybe you're thinking, worship God and God alone. Maybe the thoughts of serving one another or praying without ceasing. All of those great commandments for sure. The answer to the question I've put before you most recently is found in verses 26, 28, and 31. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I frankly can understand why the disciples were experiencing some levels of fear. I can see why this may need to be repeated time and time again. There's a lot going on here, and while Jesus was walking in their midst, the disciples have dove in head first and potentially are thinking they're in way over their heads. They've gone further than maybe they expected to go, and this journey they're on, the one they began, started with a simple, come and follow me. It sounded easier at the start of the journey, and now they find themselves in the middle of they aren't even sure what. And Jesus is speaking to them again. And this is where we hear our lesson today from Matthew. And I have to admit, I think it would make me a little on edge as well. There's talk of killing the body and those who cannot kill the soul. There's talks of swords, man against his father, daughter against her mother, daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. 
Matthew continues on saying that Jesus says, whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me, and those who find their life will lose it. Those who lose their life for Jesus' sake will find it. It's a lot to try to take in. And in the midst of all of this, we hear the call to come and follow, to walk alongside Jesus as one of his disciples. Dare I say that today's text is speaking to us as well? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of the coronavirus, which we as the world are only beginning to understand. Do not be afraid of our past. Rather, let's recognize the ways in which we've fallen short. Move forward with change. Do not be afraid of the world you're in. Do not be afraid that you've been called to do hard things. Do not be afraid that the world is completely different today than we ever thought it would be, and in some ways, for the better. While I've heard a lot of talk of wanting to return to where we are, go back to that which is comfortable for us, return to that which we knew. The world we long for, in many ways, no longer exists. We have multiple things plaguing us. Systemic racism has finally been brought to a forefront, and things are changing in the world around us. The coronavirus has changed the ways in which we're forced to interact, and we've been called to look out for our neighbors in new and different ways. We simply cannot go back to the way things were because the world is no longer the same, nor should it be. As a church, it's been hard and absolutely marvelous to lean into some new ways of being church. We've moved outside to a drive-up style worship and have been learning and figuring out ways in which we worship online. While yes, we can all name the things in which we wish we could do differently. I would love to shake your hands, give some of you some big hugs, greet you up close, fill the sanctuary with you and all of my favorite people, to sing our favorite hymns, reminding us of the promises of God. However, right now we can't. Because I don't want any of you to get sick and potentially die. What COVID has done is it's forced us outside, forced us to quickly learn how to broadcast our services on the internet. What COVID has done is we've also received messages from neighbors who are sitting outside their homes and have joined us for worship for the first time in years. We see messages from people all across the country who have joined us for worship like they never have before. Greetings. Welcome. We're glad you're here. It has allowed us to be different. Bethlehem and churches across the world are learn leaning into ways to worship and to continue to be God's church in the world. Do not be afraid. It's hard. Do not be afraid that things are different and we like what we're familiar with. Of course, there's doubt, uncertainty, longing for something else. And yet God comes to us and reminds us time and time again, do not be afraid. In the last few weeks, I have given thanks and have been delighted by the voices of our African-American brothers and sisters who over the course of the last few weeks have been so bold to remind us of God's call to work for justice and peace for people. Austin Channing Brown, one of my favorite authors, shares a powerful description of love, justice, and God's peace. She writes, We are taught that love is many things, but rarely do we think of love as risky, as disruptive, as noisy, as angry, as causing holy trouble. I believe firmly that to practice love is to disrupt the status quo, which is masquerading as peace. It caused me to pause. And it caused me to come right to today's gospel. Love is disrupting the status quo, which does sometimes masquerade as peace. This is the very type of love that Jesus embodied every moment he walked this earth. This risky, disruptive, causing holy trouble kind of love. Jesus despised the way the religious leaders hyped. Higher-ups of his day used God's holy word as an excuse to ignore the sick, cast aside the lowly, refused to assist the needy, oppress those they saw as others. Jesus literally turned the tables on religious rituals that prioritized profit over people. And Jesus continually broke social and cultural norms by sharing meals and entering into authentic relationship 
with those that the world seemed as unworthy, women, widows, thieves, lepers, foreigners, strangers, the least, and the lost. Jesus embodied the risky, disruptive, cause holy kind of trouble love that broke down barriers, spoke truth to powers of the world that oppressed God's justice, and kept all people from experiencing abundant life. So I circle back to the question I started with. What is it we should be most afraid of? Not insult, not change, not persecution, not death. What we fear from today's passage from Matthew is a half-lived life. We should fear, as Jesus infers, indifference, apathy, and complacency. We should fear cheap and easy discipleship. And Jesus reminds us that true discipleship is truly a costly discipleship. Jesus reminds us that true peace comes with a cost. And I wonder, are we ready to love like Jesus? Are we ready to love in a way that is risky, disruptive, and causes holy trouble for the sake of others? Jesus calls us out to live our daily lives as a disciple of Christ. The question could be, what is a disciple? And C.S. Lewis claims, the church exists for nothing else but to draw people into Christ, to make them little Christ. It's not merely a lifestyle we're trying to live, We are called to a radical way of living, which may in fact cause us to face things that are less than ideal, where we come to -to nose-to-nose with discomfort and sometimes uncertainty, where we serve where we're not comfortable, where we go where we never would have imagined. And Jesus envisions us in this manner, where we're experiencing intense relationships and we take on the tasks of Jesus himself. Do not be afraid. Jesus then finishes his point about fear with the talk of the sparrows and how God knows and loves every sparrow in the sky and the ones who fall. And he presses his point further. Not only does God know and watch over the sparrow, but not God knows every hair on our heads. I can't even say that about myself or about my children. I don't know the hairs upon all my heads, and yet God does. The one who created us the one who meets us in the walks, our walks as disciples, the one who calls us to life, knows us intimately and wishes abundant life for us, the one who knows you in and out, the one who knows your good, the bad, and everything in between, the one who knows the part of you you tried to hide, even from yourself, knows you, loves you, and calls you to discipleship. It is God who accompanies us on this journey. It is in the life, the death of Jesus Christ on the cross and his glorious resurrection and the work of the Holy Spirit where we find our hope. We fear not because we are wrapped up in the God who calls us, calls us to relationship and calls us to something far beyond ourselves. Today, hear the message from Matthew loud and clear. You deeply matter. Your life deeply matters to God and what you do with your life deeply matters to God. Do not be afraid of what you've been called to. God knows it won't always be easy, but God goes with you, loves you in the midst of all your trials and tribulations and everything we experience in life. Thanks be to God. Amen. May we join in our hymn of the day, I Love to Tell the Story.
join together to profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Expansive God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Lord, in your mercy. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Direct the work of all who care for birds and animals and their habitats. Lord, in your mercy. Protecting God, sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others across the world. Revive and strengthen organizations dedicated to caring for refugees and migrants while their homelands struggle for peace. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. We pray for those who suffer. We especially pray for Kevin Gedker, Jacob Lindholm, Roger Erickson, Cece and Ken Snook, Leonard Emberger, Dave Emery, Ken Kemboy, Yvonne Doust, residents and staff of assisted living and nursing home facilities, Bob Morris, the unemployed, healthcare workers, Jenny Pedersen, those affected by the coronavirus, Pam Stock, Paul Erdahl, Aldine Gossi, Michael Zucker, Bobby Sales, Clary Tollefson, Roy Cheney, those who are abused, all addicts and their families, all dealing with mental health issues, all caregivers, and all battling cancer. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and for all whom today is difficult. Lord, in your mercy. Reigning God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, we especially give thanks for Clark Tollefson and Terry Schroeder. Increase our care for one another until we will walk with them in the newness of life. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us join together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in God's eternal love. Amen. Let us join in our sending hymn, Children of the Heavenly Father.
with you.